Welcome to this episode of Servo Motor Accuracy for your CNC machine. So in the last two series, we have upgraded the motors and tuned them. And in this episode, I like to measure a part that we're going to machine for its accuracy. That is the proof ultimately. Now, if you design a part, make sure that you have some circles in here and also some linear movements that are parallel to the axis, but also something that is 45 degree. So you can measure both axes moving simultaneously. So part looks like this right here. It's difficult to see, I think, but um, let's machine it and let's measure it. So I've set up the dial indicator to touch the side of the X axis and I set the hand wheel to move one millimeter, one millimeter increment and we're going to go ahead and touch it maybe right here set it to zero okay we should see a one millimeter move nice i like it three four oh one three one nine nine so we traveled one one hundredth too much keep that back to zero one two three traveled on the back direction one one hundredths too much and we keep the hundreds going forward okay so i think i have an explanation for that that might be the backlash compensation in my machine you know what let me double check something here i want to have a look at the backlash what it is set to and uh, if i can make that more precise okay so i have Checked the backlash compensation for X and it was set to one one hundredths of a millimeter and I just cut that in half to five thousandths. However, I need to rehome the machine. So I've set everything back up and let's do the test one more time. Um, we need selection of X. Maybe two millimeter onto it. Zero. One. Two three over traveled by one hundreds which I'm, I'm happy about that that's fine two one that's nice now did you do, do you need do you see that if i turn back we come back to one millimeter so the hundreds that we carried forward is not there anymore five yeah we can still go a little bit six that's nice. That is nice. We're still off 100. I think we are probably also measuring here possibly the the ball screw tolerance. I'm actually amazed that it is as accurate as the dial indicator shows here. So I'm happy with this result. I'm going to leave it uh, like it is. Okay, I've cleaned the part with alcohol and also the caliper goes to zero. Let's measure out the, the round feature here. 2501, so we are off by, oh, 25. So it's, I have to tell you something though. I'm really far away from my face measuring this. I'm holding the part really awkward because the camera is in my way. So those measurements here, take them as a grain of salt, okay? Um, but I've measured it before and I'm 32, we're at 32.0 on the 45 right here. Let's measure the large, that's 50. And we are coming up with 50. Ah, there's wiggling going on here, so. 200s maybe 50.2 i don't want to squeeze it too hard just to get to my measurement you know what it is what it is camera or not um
50.2. Yeah. Maybe a bit more here at the bottom. Probably also 50.2. Like I said, it's, it's for me difficult to uh, hold the parts as far away from me and measure it for you. So I'm happy with those results. However, they are about two hundreds over. Now this was machined using a single flute bit and they are great for removing material out of a slot, but not really for accuracy on machining. A two flute would be better. Okay, this will conclude the servo installation tuning and optimization. And for my machine, I'm really happy. Two hundreds of a millimeter off. Uh, I can totally live with that. Now, if you run into the trouble that your machine features or the features that you measure actually are off consistently by about the same factor, you can also uh, turn the tool compensation on where the diameter is set artificially smaller or bigger for the tool pass that you generate. Okay, um, I have one other request. Could you leave me place a thumbs up? Uh, these videos make a lot of work and I will just stop making them if nobody watches them. So. I hope you had fun and uh, catch you the next time. Bye.